So thank you for coming to uh, this presentation. Uh, there's no one in using the, the resources. My name is AJ Signaria. I'm currently the co-chair for the steering committee here for the Green Party United States, as well as one of the vice chairs for the Illinois Green Party. The premise of this workshop is to understand what resources are and how to utilize that, not only for like national party purposes, but state party purposes, as well as your local or chapter and your, within your state parties. Um, this, is, this comes from my experience. I, I used to work with um, the Boy Scouts of America, and one of the things that we did was this very thing of knowing using your resources. And what we mean by that is we try to identify talent in the organization. And then from that talent, we try to match up what the needs are. And in the Boy Scouts, you can go onto their national website, they have a form, and you can look at that form and you can actually modify it within the Green Party, and I try, I'm trying to do that currently. And on this form, it just kind of lines up their name, their address, and then there's like things. So, so for Boy Scouts, there's different merit badges they, they can do. So that means if someone's an engineer in your troop unit, therefore they ought to teach engineering. Um, if you have doctors in their troop, not only they can teach medicine, merit badge, first aid, but they also can teach CPR, maybe first aid training, AED training. So those are the things we're talking about. So how do we identify these kinds of resources with the Green Party? If you have a membership coordinator, membership steward, membership um, chair, whatever you want to call that title, what the membership chair or the membership committee should do is to come up with a form as such and kind of list you know, who they are, something very, something very general, um, their occupation. You can kind of tell from their occupation what their talents consist of, um, what their hobbies, if they have any other hidden talents that they um, are they would like to share with the group, and that could be ranging from, you know, you may have a an attorney, but you know they also like to do graphic design, so you can have you know not only for legal counsel <laughs> for your state or your local chapter, but you also have someone who can probably do flyers, brochures, posters, things like that. Um, these are the kinds of things I'm talking about. You can even go as far as, you know, if you have young people coming in and you happen to have those students who are political science majors, public policy, going to pre-law, if not going to law school, um, you can utilize those talents as well. You know, you can probably incorporate them into the political party at some point. That could be the campaign, could be within the organization, and you can also kind of help mold them into becoming a better campaigner as well as a better rank and file green um, within the state level as well as the national level. So this is what I'm talking about with the resources. Um, it, we have a membership um, database. If you have any, like any of the Excel files you have, and once, once you start identifying all of these members that you may have. So you may say, I don't know, you have Johnny, okay, you know, his name, address, and on the Excel, you can actually sort them by identifying groups. So four years ago, in the Illinois Green Party, we tried to do that and we saw that we have more people in education. So we try to form an education caucus with all the teachers in the Illinois Green Party. And that caucus would consist of people who were part of the Illinois Education Association. They're also members of the National Education Association, um, the American Federation of Teachers. And we try to get them to talk to see what they can do um, in terms of getting Greens endorsed for campaigns. And we'll also try to how to convince rank and file people in the education area to go with the green platform. Um, mild successes with that um, kind of thing. Um, so what I generally do in my kind of presentations, you know, is kind of lay out the basic nature of it. So if you guys have any questions, feel free, free to raise your hand and I will answer them to the best of my ability. Um, the other thing about resources you, you, you should know is um, 
it's not just a one person's job, it's a collective effort. Um, you, it could be the membership committee that can do this. It could be the executive committee. It could be a, a sub It could be a working group within your coordinating council, whatever you call your state party um, rank and file collective is. You know, for Illinois Green Party, it is, is the coordinating council. California, I, I do believe they're also called a coordinating council, but it all depends on what your respective states call that. Um, and even for caucuses, for Illinois, or excuse me, the Green Party of the United States, you know, Labyrinth Caucus can do this, the Young Greens can do this, the Black Caucus can do this, the Latino Caucus can do this, try to identify a group of people on how to identify that kind of talent. And you shouldn't be stringent on, you know, looking for specific talent. You know, everyone has some sort of talents. You know, it could be someone who knows how to drive a bus. You know, because some of us want to go to rallies. You know, if they have a CDL license and they can get a cheap bus, that's a that's a resource. It could be, you know, um, someone has a housing co-op. You know, you can use a housing co-op for meetings. That's a resource. The things that I'm starting to do now in Chicago and Southside that I am now part of the rank and file Unitarian community. You know, I can get free rental, <laughs> so I try to get greens in there for free rental and everything to the best of my ability. So, I mean, these are the kinds of things I'm talking about. You need, we need to better utilize the resources that we have in order to advance our green agenda. Yes? Okay, when we use these, we used to call them skills matrix. Yes. And we used to use a database so we could sort it differently. Correct. Instead of a um, spreadsheet. But we always used to just put dots and sort to the dots. You know, we're looking for somebody, send the dots to the top of the list. Right. It comes down to your column. That you can do a presentation on ecology at the high school, or you can do something over here to the head. Yeah, and that's, that's the thing. You know, you can do something like that as well. Um, you know, currently some of us you actually a good portion of us use the Excel spreadsheet. Um, but there's other ways of doing it, and I'm, Excel's not just, I'm not just preaching Excel. You can do it different other ways. It's just best what suits your needs and what people know best. You know, I prefer Excel, because I that's my database background. Other people can use an SQL and make it a little bit more advanced. That's not me. <laughs> I want something basic and get it out of the way. Um, but, but that's the key is some sort of database and this is where your membership list comes into play if you have a list of 2,000 members in your state party you ought to break down you know their occupations um, I would go as far as you know adding more columns to saying now like I said your occupation but your hobbies previous experience that's even a key thing that I don't think we don't ask that much of. And if we do, we're hoping they're going to say green campaigns. But not a lot of people um, get in politics to do third party campaigning because they want to do Republican and Democrat campaigning. And I, can, and I can understand that. But even if they have experience, like in the Democratic Party, where they went recruiting candidates or fundraising or even has done some spokesperson or media work on the Democratic Party, even at the local level, that's still experience. Because they're part of the inside game that we need to know. My previous experience was Democrats before. I voted for Nader, voted for Cobb, <laughs> you know, voted for McKinney, but I mean, there was no Green Party in my area of Illinois and Northwest part, so my job was Democrats, where I fundraised and recruited candidates, stuff like that. And I kind of articulate that experience into greens and how to do things a little bit more better because I learned those kind of playbooks and then how to utilize that with the greens. I'm like, okay, now this is what they're doing. How can we turn $100 plates into affordable plates <laughs> so we can get the working class people to our events? And how do we make events that tailor to the kind of audience that we need to bring in? Because that's really the name of the game. 
when it comes to that portion. Coming back to resources. With resources, you don't have to identify just a target group. It has to be broad. You know, with young kids, especially, high, well, I would say college mostly, that's a huge resource all by itself. Because how many times in state party conference calls or in-person meetings where I say we need a meeting space? And for the most part, we have met national level and state level at schools. You know, we're here at the University of Iowa, Alfred, New York, we had our last annual national meeting. We're at Alfred University. Detroit, we're at Wayne State University. Um, Durham, I do believe that was at a high school, I believe. And if we have those youth that we recruit in and retain, then those kids and those organizations, whether it be a Campus Greens, or it could be like the Radical Physicians Club, or something that may be adhering to our 10 key values, they can get rent free room rental. And we need that, you know. The, if we get free things, then we can do things within our budget. So we should not be distringent on certain, certain things. Yes, ma'am. And you're probably wanting uh, previous experience, not just political experience, but other organizations. Yes. That's, and that's a very good point. Mm -hmm. Not just political, business experience, legal experience, and any, any, any kind of experience. And actually have that sit down conversation with the person or people you're bringing in and have this conversation, okay, we would like, we're identifying you as our talent. This is what we would like to do. How can you help us? How does that articulate to us? So if you have a former business person who was in management for say 15 years and he's now or they are agreed now how does that will it be corporate or small business how does that experience articulate into greens because they may have budget experience they may have organizational structure experience they may have motivational experience how does that help us we should not deny any kind of talent there is, because if we do, then how are we advancing our Tengi values, our platform, and how do we even get people elected to the White House? Because we need everything possible at this point. And I cannot stress that enough. Um, as much as, and I'm, I'm putting an asterisk on this, as much as we hate the 1%, there are certain things that we have to take from their playbook. You know, know thy enemy. And that's my big thing. You know, Sun Tzu's art of war. We need to know this stuff. You know, I mean, we hate the 1%, but once they start coming over here, we can be like, oh, you used to be 1%. Out the door. Okay, now you saw the light. Have a sit down. Tell us everything. How did you embezzle that crap and made it work? Not so we can embezzle money, but, you know, try to make things possible that planning, that organization, that leadership, because, you know, we still retain a lot of rank and file, and that same rank and file has sat in positions for forever and a day, and we need more turnaround, or a higher turnout, um, in order to get people into positions at state level and national level. Any other questions? Yes. Um, <clears throat> we're going to try something like this uh, in my village where I'm running for trustee. In your village, is it in Brookfield, right. Brookfield, Illinois. That's right. um, we're going to keep to the ten key values, of course, but yeah. we're going to pull from the electorate what's important to them. And they're, we're, it's not going to be a skills matrix, but yes. it's going to be their community government matrix. And then we're going to key in on targeting right to what's important to our electorate. With our skills, our skills. If we have to run a bake sale, somebody that's got bake sale in our call. If it's somebody that's the graphics with the discount at the printer, we're going to be in the printer's call and, until we get every everything covered to make the campaign a success. I would even expand that more, not just the electorate, to the constituents, but to the activists and community organizing community. 
and here's why. One of the things um, at the press conference that I attended yesterday, one of the um, interviewers was asking, you know, how does the Green Party fall into activism, stuff like that? You know, we're the only party that actually does stand out front on issues. Libertarians don't, Constitution Party doesn't. Socialists, when well, they want to. Um, I can say that. <clears throat> but we know Republicans and Democrats don't do that whatsoever. So because of that, we've been the only party that stands out front of issues. We've been the only party that's been involved in the Occupy movement. We've been the only party about single payer health care. When it comes to education, we need to reach out to those people as well, not just for recruiting purposes, but to saying, hey, you don't have to be a candidate. You don't have to join the Greens, but we want to build a coalition with you. We want to work with you, and that's fine, and that's still a resource. I'm on the organizing committee for the Chicago Alliance Against Racist Political Repression. I didn't tell them I was a Green because I know the majority of the time they go with Democrats, but <clears throat> as soon as they found out the things I've done on the committee, I was like, okay, what you don't know is I'm the co-chair for Green Party United States. Oh, so Greens do have leaders. I'm like, yeah, we do, and we're legit. <laughs> so, and because of that, they've been a little bit more open to that. And so, because of that, you know, what can we do? They have an office space. Greens can be here anytime. We have copiers; they can copy anything they want. We have a printer; you can use our printer. You know, you pay for it, but you can use our printer. Stuff like that. Those are the kinds of things I'm talking about as well. Those are still resources, you know. Even though earlier I'm talking about joining the party, and then once they join, try to identify that talent. But it also goes to outreach and trying to go into those community meetings, those town halls, things like that. And so once we do that and try to attract more people, then we can become a stronger party because it's not we're not just a green party because you know we're at the General Assembly for Occupy, we're at the rally for single payer health care, we're in City Hall, hopefully dropping a banner when it comes to educational issues. You know, these are things that we need to be more out front on. You know, and this is why I still feel the Green Party is probably the only radical party you know, that has some ballot access and everything because, like I said, we stand out front, you know. Jill did her thing with XL Pipeline. Some of us in Springfield dropped a banner in the house saying, you know, vote for need, not for greed. You know, we did that. You know, some of us went down to Tampa for the Republican National Convention and everything. Um, to just pretty much, you know, screw off. So. <clears throat> This is what we do, you know, and the better we outreach and identify activists and community organizers that can help us, then they will be more apt to adhere to our 10 key values, our platforms, if not certain planks, and trying to become a bigger, bigger, and better party. That's what the bottom line is for me. Anything else? I know this is a boring subject. No, so. interesting. Oh, I think it was well Oh, okay. It's a, I mean, it's, it's very short and sweet. Um, there's nothing really to it. I mean, I can go on detail-wise, but. Go ahead. Did you have a question? Yeah. Um, some advice. Yeah. Um, I, I'm from Kansas City, Missouri. Okay. And uh, we have had a history where we helped in the very beginnings of the Green Movement. Yes. Uh, Dee Barry was one of the very first facilitators prior to the formation of the Green Party. Uh, we're now uh, not really functioning well. Right. Uh, we do have a monthly forum uh, where we deal with various topics. And more recently, uh, we have started what we have called uh, the United Progressives. Mm -hmm. And uh, we feel that uh, this is a, an approach which is uh, very effective. Uh, we're getting a lot of folks from, from obviously different uh, organizations, peace, environmental, social justice, and so forth. And uh, we have uh, bi-monthly meetings. And 
uh, there are obviously uh, just uh, some wonderful uh, progressive type folks. Um, and because of our message, uh, we really feel, a number of us, some of us, a few of our, our core people feel that we really need to move on and, and, and uh, do some revising uh, 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 of, of the earlier uh, uh, kind of efforts that we had. So I, I, I'm kind of asking uh, you folks, now when we want to uh, reach out, uh, some advice on maybe some better ways to do it. Uh, uh, we, we do have what we call our state uh, progressive party, which is the Green Party. Yeah. Uh, and that's a history in itself. We won't deal with that. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, because the you know the, the crucial importance of our message uh, dealing with global warming and everything else, uh, we've got to uh, get out there. And, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm taking what I've been hearing is that uh, whatever advice you could give us as we were trying now to reach out. So I know a little bit about the history with Missouri. Okay. I, I know the, as well as um, Mitch Potts was a little bit part okay. of that effort as well. So I understand the whole Progressive Party context okay, and you know all that. that. So I understand, I understand that. All right. Um, Two things. One, for Missouri specifically, um, the best bet to revive something. It's a somewhat of a big state, you know, and the best thing, you know, the forums are great because you're attracting people. Oh, yeah. And depending on what the content of those forums are, you know, it, it would, I don't know, I haven't seen them, you know, so I don't know what they are, but. I would venture to say, you know, maybe expand the content more to bring in a greater audience. But yeah. when you do these forums, do you have a piece of paper or something that says, you know, join now in progressive yeah. parties? But well, we do. what, what do you do? Yeah. You know, not ask specific things yet. You know, it's like your, or you know, name, number, email, we have book it. form. My organization, the Foundation I Front, the, the last thing I have is organization. Yeah, we have that. Not only for my database purposes, but that tells me I may know someone in that organization mm -hmm. to say, hey, so-and-so came, what do you know about them? That's the kind of effort you also need to do. So if you we, have we, someone from... We do that. Okay, awesome. Then the next step is, and this has been talked about and it should happen, um, I would also talk to Holly Hart um, I'll be more than happy to talk, but I know some other people in Illinois might talk because we've always wanted to do a Midwest um, conference or something like that. And maybe something in Missouri just to show that presence, just for that start to show people, hey, there is something in Missouri, you know, but to have this conversation like how to help states like Missouri out. Indiana's going through the same issues because they may be f um, losing their state affiliation status because of membership. So I've been helping with Jay Parks and all that, so that's kind of there. But I think that's what needs to happen too, is be up front and talk to people in the Midwest. We need help. And what can you do? Be more than happy to do conference calls. Um, Holly can come down, I can come down, you know, we can do stuff like that. Um, that's like that's just my advice. We will be having a uh I think in September or October, a state meeting in uh, Columbia, Missouri. In Columbia? All right. And uh, so maybe I'll talk with you later on. That's fine. I'd be more happy to go to Columbia again. Yeah. Jeffrey Hader. Yeah. Well, I was just saying, you know, one of the things that I think that is important when you your resources, because you, I, I got to hook you up with James in our state, because he's all about that, too. About outreach going to. Which James? James. James Jones? Yes, yes, yes. You probably yeah, know. Yeah, we've okay. talked. Like, yeah, you guys would like to know, sure. But anyway, um, soulmates, whatever. <laughs> but you go up, I would say kind of the spot of like this acronym, or like S-E-A-C, like go out to see, and it's kind of where you support people and empower people and appreciate people. Because so many times there's this kind of a, 
I've seen in my state, and unfortunately, I really have to fight against this, the stream. And I, this isn't including James, but you know, people, um, they're not, they don't want to empower them. They want to kind of, there's been this, this core group that has been at the state level, and, and they feel like, and they have good intentions. They're true greens, they love greens, but they want to hold that power, and they have a problem with letting someone else do things. Like, oh, well, we want to have this web editorial board. It's like, no, just let people that are good writers put things on the web and, you know, empower people to do these things because that's how you get people to do things for you. If you try to hold them down and say, so you have to stand the structure, that's, and, and not to say that there should be no structure. There should be, but I mean, to make it the strict thing where you've got to answer this person or to this committee or something before, you know, so anyway, that's why I say it's like just to, if you support people, you know, or like empower them, let them do it, appreciate them, thank them for it, instead of just like, oh good, you know, thanks, or whatever, or it, it kind of push them off, don't even say thanks, just kind of like expect it, and think, you know, you're, you're lucky I'm working with you, <laughs> and I'm not saying anyone does, but if there's a tendency to do that, to underappreciate people, but if you do that, and then you support them, in the, you know, in the future with their other things that they do, if you remember that, like acronym, it's just—it's just—it helps people keep doing it and want to do it and feel valued because everybody wants to be valued. Everybody wants to feel like they made a contribution and it's been for a good reason. And so that's what I mean. It's just and that support, the follow up, you know, when they're, you know, they run into difficulties, you would help them out. Just don't just leave them out to out to see it <laughs> literally. But but so. Yeah, but on that note, mm -hmm. um, and you brought something up that I just completely forgot. Motivation. Mm -hmm. This workshop um, is a little bit about membership, but it's just pretty much an overall general mm -hmm. knowing your resources, right? <clears throat> From a member, membership perspective, you have to motivate your members. And there's two kinds of motivation. There's that external motivation, there's that internal motivation. The external motivation is that appreciation. And with appreciation, that's appreciation is not only being thankful for them doing it, but appreciating who they are and what they do. And I don't think we do enough of this. Um, I'll, I'll get to your point. Okay. Um, because of this, we. From my observations, I've seen people come in, do work, and they'll be like, thank you, move on. I'm not saying have cake. I'm not saying take them out to the bar, that'd be helpful. But something to say thank you. It could be a card. It could be a phone call, you know, paying for a trip for you know, national meetings. Something just to appreciate them with. You know, um, and once you show them that kind of external motivation, it would also it would lead into empowerment. We, and this is a question we always have in the Greens: is how do we empower people? Because this is internal motivation. Some of us are empowered all the time. You know, for me, I don't need a lot of external. Every now and then I do, but there's sometimes. I just feel empowered just to do something and hopefully it works. So in order to achieve this, you have to do that. You know, because external motivation equates into internal, but it also works the other way around. Because if you're just this person who just comes into your local or your state party, or if you're a brand new delegate to the National Committee for GPUS, if you are already empowered, then people will also appreciate you if you do good work, you know? So these two work in both ways. All right, <clears throat> so, so this is something that I took a note on that you said earlier, <clears throat> that we want the playbook of the Green Party. Yeah. Currently, we don't have a playbook, correct? We have some materials on the website, okay. but in order to say we have a manual, to say that we actually have a playbook, no. Okay, so, <laughs> this, is what, this is what I'm thinking. I have a cartoonist that worked for Walt Disney that owes me a favor. All right. I think we should be playful and use our support and power yeah. and appreciate 
and to put together a playbook as a goal, maybe for next year, mm -hmm. that we can hand somebody or reference to go to the website and welcome, and here you are, you're somebody special. And, and, that, and that's something that can be done. You know, yeah. and that can be even done at the state level yeah. with brand new people because mm -hmm. how many here for the interstate parties do like an orientation on the Green Party? Um, you're right, there's no hands raising. So we don't do that. You, well, you're from this Florida. You guys are special. <laughs> what? No, no, go ahead. No, go ahead, Jennifer. No, I, I, the orange, but what, what I do, I happen to be, we're in a state where we divide it up at the quarters. Yes. And I'm the Southwest coordinator. And then we actually have no other, there were, and now we, we, you know, so I'm the only one that actually is doing this, but I've incorporated getting people that have skills that I don't have, and I don't begrudge them that. I don't go, well, I need to be in charge. I'm like pseudo in charge. I'm like, okay, you you got this, you can do this. Thank you. Help. And, and they will, and they, that's, again, with that's empowerment. But also, there's a way of like, there's people that are new, we have to understand it. So what, what I do with the new people, I have this idea, it's like, you know what, this is how what this is how I started, you know, to get my county party going. Because what our goal is to get 60, we have 67 counties, we want all 67 counties to be affiliated with the state or be active parties and have an active party going, which is quite a big goal in this state. It's, it's not an easy state, but, but for various reasons. But anyways, um, it, and it just, I give them this idea of like, just start up, go to the supervisor of elections, get, you know, the list of the greens, and you can send out a card to everybody and have a meeting place, meet in an independent business, um, you know, preferably a coffee shop, um, and, you know, bank. Uh, you a a, a, bank. yes, yes, community yeah. banks, bookstores, um, uh, independent restaurants, but something like that, or a library, but someplace where you can meet. That's convenient and make it convenient for you. Don't make it don't don't be knocking yourself out to like go way across town when you can have one right you know, just, unless you find out that everybody that's coming is way across town, then it's worth it. And then it's like, you know, but make it so and then just and do these things like have an hour meeting and start up, you know, that let people know. And I actually call them planning sessions because it says more of an action word. And so then you know, come to come to the planning session. And that way they kind of feel like, okay, we're gonna do something. You know, we're not just gonna be up to meeting that can drag on and it's just like from seven to eight. And I put the start and end time and figure you could really get everything done in an hour. And if people really feel like, okay, we're off on this tangent, we're gonna, we've got a, a team here that we wanna start working on, you know, they're fracking and we wanna start, okay, we're gonna work on that, then go to, you know, stay longer, hang out, do what, you know, and everyone else can go home. Nobody, you know, that kind of thing, and, and, and anyway, so it's just this whole idea of taking them through this whole experience that I went through. Like, you maybe you're gonna have to get someone that's outgoing to do this, you're gonna have to, you, you know, but do your best, it's not, you know, um, but it's easier if you have someone who, that doesn't mind, you know, if had sales experience, you don't mind that like you're sitting, you may be the only one there, you may sit there. So sometimes I've been at things where I've started in a county, started a meeting place, I'm the only one there. Well, I have flyers. I talk to people there. I'm in the restaurant. I'm like, I'm here with the green party, and here's the, you know, and and just figuring like, okay, no one showed up. Okay, fine. Or one person shows up, and then you you know they feel a little awkward. It's like, well, you understand that you know not everybody is an activist. That's that's one of the things. So of all our members, there's only so many that are going to be active anyway. But that's okay because they're still voting for us. They're still behind us. They're supporting us and giving us numbers, but they're not. Only, so anyway, that, that kind of, so that's what I would call a playbook. So we start our people out with just an experience, this is how you do it. But expanding on that, then we have James, who is like an IT person at USF. So what he can do, and I said, let me hook you up with James, because I can give you the basic, I'm a pencil, paper person, and so not that I don't you know, use the web or anything, but I mean, he, he can take, he can go in and find out not only just their addresses and get their names, he knows a way to find out, how to find, you know, like all this info about their phone numbers or email. And so, so, I mean, whatever you have, it, like he said, use your resources and this, so that this, so he's empowered to do that. It's like, oh, I, hook up, I don't even think about it, you know, or then like that's the next step. And then, you know, so anyway, it just that, that is helpful. So what state are you with? I'm with Florida. Florida. So, yeah. Yeah. 
and we, I mean, we still hear about the 2000 election. It's just like, it's, oh, it's getting less and less. And actually, some people are actually like congratulating us. You know, really, we're glad you stayed around and we realized you were right. And all of a we're starting to see, you know, so and that's a good feeling because after, so that's another thing. You can be able to, you know, fluctuate with the good and the bad and just accept it. I mean, there's times, and then, you know, so you, like, like you said, if you're at a meeting where you're the only one, there, or, there, or there's only one person with you, you got to be able to flex from that to where you have a meeting where, like, maybe there's two people that always come, all of a sudden you get, like, six new people. It's like, oh, wow. You know, you gotta, how do I handle it? You get all giddy. And so you, so you got to be able to, to balance so you don't look too, you know, overly, you know, like, freak that, that these people are there. Just like, okay, great, you know, and then bring them in. And, and so, but that's, it's just a matter of being friendly and being, you know, accepting, like, knowing that, as a salesperson, which is like, you have a good product. We are the best party out there. We are the hope for the future. You know, vote your values. I want to, you know, and, and we go to like, um, like if we, like a veggie fest or something. We print, we take out of the ten, uh, out of the platform. We cop, make copies out of the things that say in the platform, and also ten key values about things that relate to animals. And so then we go there, and it's just like, and I just really look at people in the eye and go, "You're a vegetarian. You actually, you don't vote green." We're the only party that support animal rights. We're the only party that says, you know, to show them all these things. And it's kind of like, put a guilt trip on it, but with a friendly smile. <laughs> and it's kind of but like, you know, oh, I'm just surprised. You would think that you would support that. I mean, it's just, and just registering green doesn't hurt. You know, it doesn't, you can still vote any way you want, but if you register green, you register your values. Yes. Well, what I would like to see nationally is I would like to see, like you said, the customized sheets. I don't think that each state should have to together on their own. So there should be a, um, an info sheet so that if you're going to do a table at a vegetarian festival or you're going to do a table at a, a green expo for mm -hmm. solar panels, um, there should be a sheet that is kind of like, Already talks about focused. the Green Party. Maybe the flip side can talk about all the other key values of the Green mm -hmm. Party, but I think the front of the sheet should talk about all the things that Green Party does for the environment, and people can print those off the website and bring those to an environmental festival. And I think there should be an animal rights one, and I think there should be one that talks about pharmaceuticals or chemicals. Um, I think there should be different info sheets for different events, like a quick and just a standard one, because otherwise people are like wasting are wasting their time. Huh. But there's a, there's a standard. Yeah, I mean, but, but yeah. no, no, not for the topics. Um, That's what, I mean. what what you're referring to is what we call talking points. Mm -hmm. um, to my knowledge, Scott McClarty, who's our press person, may have a better answer than I do. That's something that can be done on the website in the talking points. We have a platform, and the platform is like um, an abstract for each plank. But it's not like what you're referring to where someone can say, okay, we have environmental slash animal rights. Green Party has done this, has done this, has done this. This is where we stand on these issues, mm -hmm. right? We don't have that, and that's something else that can be done. How that ties into a resource is if you have someone in your state party who's not your media coordinator because they volunteered, who's actually done media work whether it be blog talk radio, do a radio store, TV station in the garage, whatever, or they've actually worked for a local NBC affiliate, that they have experience, they can do that. But that well, should be on the state level. And no, 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 I agree with you, it should be a national thing. Mm -hmm. But it should also be state ones because there's some things like Green Party United States cannot speak to Illinois issues because okay. Florida doesn't have a Mike Madigan, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, it's a breakdown. Of right. State. So, so you're right. It should be a general overview of this is where we stand. But states should also have their own talking points. Mm -hmm. And you know, Florida, we don't like our governor. In Florida, we've done this for the coasts. In Florida, we still have to BP oil for the Gulf, Gulf of Mexico. Blah 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 blah. blah. Yeah, and I mean, I think it should, at the best, I mean, it should come, we should have a national, a basic one for everybody just to start out, the new people, and give them a resource. I think that's a good idea. 
And I think that there should be the state, and also because it breaks down grassroots county, and I always tell people too, the new people, just like, you know what, you have things in your county, you need to do it, and then it, work with the coalition, start to get people involved in something that, you know, is happening, that's, you know, an issue for your county. The whole state, don't expect the whole state to always know what's going on in your county. You know, and you, it's up to you to, it's, you know, to take that task. But, you know, I think the other thing is, when we're talking about empowering, is to have someone, if you've got a great person that does media work that can, comes up with a great sheet for us, that they should link to the national and help the national, instead of always, you know, I, th I think that's one of the things that we're, we expect, you know, okay, tap down, help us out, even though we're grassroots. You know, we gotta, this, it comes from us. So, you know, help the national if you can. I, so I referred people like that were good writers, I go, well, I send it up to David doing it and he puts it in the green pages, you know, and they feel great. They're like, wow, I'm in the green pages, you know, but I mean, that's, we should be always trying to help, help the main cause. Well, one of the ways we're trying to do it, we, of course, we want our chapter to look really good. So we're writing our own green papers now. We're doing our own websites. We're breaking it down so all our elected officials have a page that, that they're linked. Uh -huh. um, right That's now, great. we're doing a green paper on charter schools because hot ticket mm -hmm. item in Chicago. Oh, yeah. So I've got statements from the NEA, I've got statements from the Chicago Teachers Association, I've got statements from Montessori schools, Waldorf schools, and we're going to press. Good. Because and we're going to go to magazines after that. As soon as the one article goes in, it gets flipped. It gets flipped. It gets flipped. Can you tell That's that my excellent. father was a public relations executive? <laughs> my first job was with the majority whip of the state of Pennsylvania. Yes, I have experience in uh -huh. government, and I'm looking forward to sharing it. Yeah, yeah and, and it's perfect time. That's what exactly what I'm talking about. It's like the veg fest is one, and then like unions should be with us. I have talked to unions, like organizing and stuff, going, "Why are you?" And they go, well, "You have, you know, we really should. We like that the Green Party says but we have to vote Democrats." I'm like, "No, you, you don't. don't." And I said, "You're you're you're biting your own hand, you know." And it's just like they're constantly counting on you, and they don't care. So it's like, it's time to, it's like, don't be an abused spouse. <laughs> you know, you just gotta, and, and just try, try to get them to think that way, but that's exactly what we would wanna do in Chicago because of what's going on with the schools. And, the, and it's that while that rage is there, while that energy is there, just pop in and go, you know what? We will make a difference. You know, that's, it's in our core values. And, yeah, so, perfect. Any other questions? When are you gonna come up with this, this sheet? Sorry, <laughs> you're hey, you're hey, I, <laughs> the person the person spoke it up first gets to do that. Oh, I'm just saying that's a good point too. You bring up an idea. And she's raising her hand still, so. Run. Well, I am a writer, and I actually write some of these. Oh, you do write. My fear is bureaucracy. What's I, I mean, I like. For example, what I've seen happen in Florida. I, mm. I live in California, but I'm registered green in Florida. No. And um, yeah, my husband's a Coast Guard, so we move all over. Uh, what I've seen happen is there's, like you were talking about, that, that core group of people that they don't like new greens. Well, I should say they don't like new greens, but they don't want the new greens to jump in and start running. They like them, they just want them to stay over there. Well, they want them to vote with, but they don't, you know, if I was to say, hey, you know, I want to write this, mm -hmm. it would have to get, um, I, under I understand yeah. getting approval, like people want to make sure I'm not writing something completely insane, right. but it would have to get, like, where each person has to come back and say if they want to add a line, take a line out, and yeah. that just means as a writer, as an author of a book published by Random House, to have just somebody who's like, like 18 different people want to be able to knit an okay. article, it makes me not want to volunteer to write, and so that's what I'm just... So, I would volunteer to do a lot of writing if I knew that I'd have a little bit of autonomy. So something like something like that, I would just say just go straight to Scott. Yeah. Write it. Talk to Scott first. Yes. Draft it, send it to Scott, okay. and Scott, yeah. and let Scott take care of the bureaucracy work of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that we can get past it. Scott and Blair, you won't blow. Okay. This is my last comment on it. Yeah. <laughs> and what we decided, we're so uh, disappointed with our West Side Greens and mm -hmm. trying to make statements. We've decided that if we publish something or put a draft out, they have three days to respond like a professional business yes. meeting. Right. Set deadlines. That's exactly. it. That's if it. you don't come back and say there's something wrong with what we're going to publish, it's going down. 
And that's what we had been doing in Florida, really, because it was a basic, like, we thought, okay, let's the state, they want their power, they don't have it, just keep us on the ballot line, do the, the, the filings with the treasures, but we created the West Coast Green, so it gives us all time, and now we can block, now we do these things, and we just do it, and like, and they're like, you know, a block against it, and we're like, you know what, no, we're working with you, we want to be worked side by side, but we're going to have our own basic rules, so that so that we can empower people, so that we can get this talent, and then so that right, hopefully it's they'll exciting to have people was, volunteer to do a blog post, and you don't want to scare them away. I think right. If they're, right. If they're energetic and they're yeah, and, and again, like if they write something totally wrong, you know, pull it off the website. <laughs> but you know, anyway. So if there's anything you you want to get away from this workshop is this: the key things is to appreciate and empower the external and the internal motivation in order to get those resources. And not only your resources, but to retain members, also to recruit new members, because once you exude all this appreciation, then people are gonna understand that and come to you a little bit more. Identify talent. It doesn't matter if they have a house and they can just open their home for meetings or, you know, they can give money, you know, those that end of the spectrum right there, identify that talent, you know, because if you just nitpick that we need specifically this and we need to find that, you're just going to be, it's going to be very hard to do that. So oh, cast a wide net and try and filter out your talent as you go. What's goes to like being broad on your talent, try to be broad on that. Um, and then the, the last thing is very important. Utilize your membership list, your state membership list, and a campaign list. Whether you run for Congress, whether you run for state representative, or if you run for, what's Jesse C, the California Renters Board, something like that association. It doesn't matter. If you have a campaign list with your donors on there, people you talk to, um, the, what I call a starred list, it's all the, not starred people, but they're starred because they have a resource that if I go to them, they're gonna be knocking on doors. If I go to this person, they're gonna be a surrogate for me. That's the kind of thing I'm talking about. So if you combine your membership list and your campaign list to identify those talents, then you can just be this awesome Green Party organization. Mm -hmm. So. That's all I have, so thank you all for coming. All right, thank you. I should have worn my Penn State hat and worn the Penn State on the Now, what state are you in? Now, you're, you're I'm in Bloomingdale, Illinois? Brookfield. Illinois, I'm in Brookfield. Are you from Pennsylvania, though? Oh, Green Mile Island? Yeah, I grew up right next to it. My husband's from Pennsylvania. Oh, really? Yeah, well, we're in the Penn Oh, okay. Okay, 12. Mm -hmm. Scared of us this year. <laughs> so I'm sure Rita's is giving me a fearful about charter schools. Oh, hey, you should see my paper. It's really good. Yeah, sure. So you know James, huh? Yeah, he and I talked. Oh, yeah. You know, if, if, if you don't mind, uh, I'd like to.